Louisville Ladder welcomes you to the Climb Academy, our comprehensive safety training program. Since 1946, Louisville Ladder has led the industry in building safe, high-quality climbing products. We've also been an outspoken promoter of user safety. Every product we build is designed to meet or exceed the rigorous safety standards of ANSI, OSHA, and CSA. And our engineers work closely with ANSI to develop safety codes for the entire ladder industry. But even though we build safe products, it's up to you to learn how to use them safely. Every year, more than 160,000 people in the United States suffer ladder-related injuries, and more than 100 people die from ladder-related injuries each year. Studies show that 90% of these injuries could have been avoided if workers had been properly trained. That's why we started Climb Academy. Let's introduce the meaning of climb, C-L-I-M-B. C stands for choose the right ladder. We'll show you how to determine the best ladder for the job. L stands for look closely for damage or missing parts. You'll learn how to properly inspect your ladder for damage or missing parts. I stands for implement a safe setup routine. We'll show you how to ensure a safe, stable setup for your ladder. M stands for move slowly and carefully. We'll discuss the proper way to climb and descend a ladder. B stands for become a ladder safety expert. We'll cover everything you need to know about how to properly use and care for your ladder. Now let's apply the climb guidelines to step ladders and extension ladders. Choose the right ladder. Not all ladders are made for the same types of jobs. For this reason, you must evaluate your work environment, keeping in mind any potential hazards. There are four factors to consider when choosing a ladder. Ladder type, length, load capacity, and material. So, which ladder is right for you? Let's explore the variety of options available. Step ladders are great for low and medium height jobs. They are self-supporting, non-adjustable ladders suitable for a wide variety of professional and household tasks like painting and changing light bulbs. Platform ladders are excellent for tasks that require standing for extended periods since the platform reduces fatigue. They also reduce the risk of standing or sitting at unsafe levels that regular step ladders can present. Twin front ladders are a special type of step ladder designed for jobs where two people have to be on one ladder at the same time. Twin front ladders can be climbed from either side. The load capacity applies to both sides individually. Extension ladders are designed for extended height tasks, such as working on roofs and painting the outside of buildings. Extension ladders are non-self-supporting and require an upper support surface to lean against. They are adjustable in length and thus very versatile and suitable for a wide variety of jobs. There are also a variety of special use ladders, such as tripod ladders and aircraft mechanical ladders that are used for specific industries and tasks associated with operations within. Once you've determined the correct type of ladder for your job, the next step is choosing the right length. Never use a ladder that is too long or too short for the job. For step ladders, if you need to stand on or above the first step below the top cap, it's too short and you should use a taller ladder. To determine the right step ladder length, think about the maximum standing height you will need. The maximum standing level is listed on the model label. If you need to stand above three feet, you'll have to use a six foot ladder. This will allow a maximum standing height of 3 feet 9 inches. Again, the maximum standing height will be listed on the notice label. When using an extension ladder, if you need to stand on or above the third rung from the top, it's too short. Keep in mind, the overlap between the fly and the base sections and the required 75.5 degree setup angle reduce the maximum standing height for extension ladders. This means if you want to reach a maximum height of 13 feet, a 20 foot extension ladder is required. A 20 foot extension ladder allows for a maximum standing height of 13 and a half feet. To learn more about extension ladder lengths, see our extension ladder length selection guide in the Climb Academy Handbook. Once you've determined the ladder type and height, it's time to choose the load capacity. When choosing the appropriate load capacity, consider your weight plus the weight of any tools or materials you may be using while working on it. The American National Standards Institute recognizes five different ladder load capacity ratings. Type 1 AA ladders have a load capacity of 375 pounds. These ladders are recommended for extra heavy duty use. Type 1A ladders have a load capacity of 300 pounds. 
These ladders are also suitable for extra heavy duty use. Type 1 ladders have a load capacity of 250 pounds. They're recommended for heavy duty use. Type 2 ladders have a load capacity of 225 pounds. They're recommended for medium duty use. Finally, Type 3 ladders have a load capacity of 200 pounds. They are recommended for light duty use. To avoid possible injury, never exceed a ladder's designated load capacity. Finally, you must choose the material of the ladder. You may choose either aluminum or fiberglass. Aluminum ladders are lightweight, making them easier to lift, carry, and set up. They're great for roofing, installing siding, painting, or cleaning windows. You should never use an aluminum ladder around live electricity. Fiberglass ladders are a little heavier than aluminum, but they're made especially for working around electrical circuits and cables. Fiberglass ladders greatly decrease your risk of getting shocked or electrocuted, provided they are dry and clean. Once you've determined the right ladder for the job, it's time to look closely for damage or missing parts. Thoroughly inspect your ladder for any bent, worn, broken, or missing parts. Check all the rails for bends and cracks. And check each rung or step for bends, defects, or loose rail connections. Make sure that the feet of the ladder aren't broken or malfunctioning, and ensure the slip-resistant pads are intact and secure. When applicable, check extension ladder ropes for fraying, and test ropes and pulleys to confirm they are operating smoothly. On extension ladders, also check the rung locks to ensure they are not bent, cracked, or broken, and are functioning correctly. For step ladders, inspect the steps, rails, and spreader braces. No matter what type of ladder you use, be sure the rungs or steps are clean, free of oil, grease, wet paint, or any other slippery substance. Finally, check the feet of the ladder to guarantee a solid, slip-resistant foundation. If you find a defect, such as a loose foot pad, your ladder isn't safe to use. Tag it for repair or disposal. Whatever you do, don't use it. By taking a few minutes to inspect your ladder in conjunction with the safety standards set forth by OSHA, ANSI, and CSA, you'll make your home or workspace much safer and you'll avoid needless injuries. It's important to carry out a thorough inspection of your ladder each and every time you use it. Now onto I. Implement a safe setup routine. When it comes to a safe, stable setup, it helps to follow a setup routine. For step ladders, first check the floor or ground surrounding your ladder for any clutter. Even small objects like nails or building debris can cause your ladder's feet to slip. Then spread the ladder until the spreader braces are locked into place. Make sure your ladder is also stationed on dry ground. Make sure the floor surface is level and that all four legs are in firm contact with the ground with no wobbling. Never climb a step ladder that's not fully open. It isn't stable and can lead to serious injury. Extension ladders have unique setup rules. To set up an extension ladder, first set the feet of the ladder against a fixed object to prevent the bottom from sliding out. Next, walk the ladder into an upright position. When you raise the fly section, check that the rung locks are fully engaged over the base rungs. Remember, to access a rooftop, the extension ladder should always extend at least three feet above the roof line or upper support point. According to OSHA and ANSI, extension ladders need to lean on a solid surface at a 75.5 degree angle for maximum stability. Setting up an extension ladder at an angle greater than 75 degrees could cause it to tip. A setup angle of less than 75 degrees could cause the ladder to slip out from under you. To achieve a 75 degree angle, follow these two steps. Place your toes against the bottom of the side rails of your ladder. Stand up straight and extend your arms straight out. If your palms touch the top of the rung at shoulder level, you've found the correct angle. Finally, never reposition, extend, or retract the fly section of an extension ladder while standing on the ladder or from above. To further stabilize your extension ladder, anchor it with tie downs. Before climbing, make sure ladder feet are on a firm, level surface. Use the spike position for penetrable surfaces or tie down the base of the ladder if necessary. Secure the lower portion with tie downs before climbing and further secure the ladder by engaging the Louisville Ladder Quick Latch. Louisville Ladder offers many accessories to maximize accessibility, stability and safety. When working against a pole, use the pole attachment for a safer setup. If you're working with cable, mount cable hooks on the top of the ladder. If the floor or ground under your ladder isn't level, use a ladder leveler as shown here. Never climb a ladder that isn't on a level surface. 
remember to always be aware of your surroundings. If you're setting up near a door, lock it or block it so it cannot be opened into your ladder. If you're setting up in a traffic lane, secure the area with barriers or caution tape so that no one walks or drives equipment near your ladder. And before climbing, always check overhead to ensure you're clear of wires or other obstructions. Now on to M. Move slowly and carefully when climbing a ladder. Always keep three points of contact when climbing up or down a ladder. Keep either two feet and one hand, or two hands and one foot touching the ladder at all times. Your belt buckle should never extend out past the side rails of a ladder. This is called overreaching, and it's an unsafe practice. Be smart. Move the ladder. Wear clean, slip-resistant shoes to avoid foot fatigue and other injuries to your feet. Once you have reached your work level, make sure the middle of your body is centered within the ladder rails to maintain proper balance. When using an extension ladder to access a roof or other elevated surfaces, make sure that you have three feet of ladder extending above the surface. The spare length will offer support while climbing on and off the ladder. Again, we recommend always tying or securing your ladder at the upper level to prevent movement. We've now reached the final letter in climb, B. Become a ladder safety expert. To help you become a ladder safety expert, we've put together this set of rules covering every aspect of ladder use and care. When choosing the right ladder, first evaluate all of the potential hazards and physical requirements of the job. Next, inspect your ladder thoroughly. Never use a ladder that is cracked, bent, has split rails or missing parts. Always use a fiberglass ladder when working around electricity. Be sure to figure out the total weight you will be carrying up and down the ladder. This includes tools, equipment, and supplies. Never load a ladder with weight in excess of its load capacity. And remember, a longer ladder doesn't mean it has a higher load capacity. Remember these rules when setting up a ladder. Never place or use a ladder on slippery or uneven surfaces. And don't position the ladder where it could be bumped by a door or block foot traffic or work vehicles. If you have to work in front of a door, lock it or block it. Or put up a caution sign. Don't set up an extension ladder or an individual extension ladder section upside down or backwards. And never set up a ladder on top of a scaffold. When climbing a ladder, follow these guidelines. Don't climb a ladder that has oil, grease, wet paint, or any other slipping hazards. Always climb slowly and securely. Keep your hands free when climbing, maintaining three points of contact at all times. Heavy or awkward items should be handed up to you or raised by an alternative means such as a tow line. Always face a ladder when climbing or descending. Never climb a step ladder that's closed or not fully open. And don't climb on the back of a single-sided step ladder. Doing so can damage the ladder or result in injury. Never attempt to climb from one ladder to another. And of course, don't climb a ladder while under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Here are some simple tips to follow while working on a ladder. Never allow more than one person to work on a single-sided step ladder or any extension ladder at the same time. They are designed to hold only one person at a time. Don't try to cut anything while on a ladder. Don't stand or sit on a pail shelf. It's not made to support your weight. Never tie two ladders together to make a longer section. When on an extension ladder, don't step over the top when climbing onto a roof. Instead, step sideways onto the roof. When working on a ladder, never overreach, lean to one side, or stand on one foot. You could lose your balance and tip the ladder. And of course, never use a ladder for anything other than its stated purpose. Now, let's cover the proper ways to transport a ladder. Never try to move a ladder while standing on it. Also, don't try to move a ladder with materials on it, as they could fall and hurt someone. When carrying an extension ladder by yourself, make sure the front end is a little higher than the back. You may also rest the ladder with the center balanced on your shoulder with your arm through the ladder. And make sure the ladder is fully closed when carrying. When transporting a ladder on a vehicle, tie or secure both ends of the ladder to the ladder rack to prevent vibration between the ladder and the vehicle. For extension ladders, make sure both the fly and base sections are secured to the ladder rack. Place the Louisville quick latch in the locked position, which will prevent the fly section from extending during transit. Always take care when placing a ladder onto or removing them from ladder racks. Finally, let's discuss how to properly care for your ladder. Promptly remove any moisture from the ladder. Never drop or throw ladders. This can damage or weaken them and potentially lead to serious injury. Keep ladders protected from harsh weather conditions and corrosive materials. Never use a ladder that has been exposed to fire, acids, caustics, or other strong chemicals. These may damage or weaken the ladder. Keep them clean and maintain them by lightly lubricating moving parts, such as spreader braces, hinges, locks, and pulleys. Never use a damaged ladder. 
tag it and store it away from usable ladders, and have it repaired or destroyed as soon as possible. Now that you know what it takes to be a ladder safety expert, it's time to put what you've learned into practice. Let's review the climb guidelines once more. Choose the right ladder. Look closely for damage or missing parts. Implement a safe setup routine. Move slowly and carefully when climbing or descending a ladder. And finally, become a ladder safety expert. We hope the Louisville Ladder Climb Academy has given you a solid understanding of scaffold safety. For questions or additional information, call us at 1-800-666-2811. To see the full line of Louisville Ladder products, visit our website at www.louisvilleladder.com.